Thanks. Thanks, Don. Good morning, all. And uh, as Elaine's pointed out, welcome once again to uh, uh, this place of gathering. Uh, and it is, uh, it's an unusual set of circumstances where we have a celebration three days in a row. And uh, uh, one of the things that I continue to anticipate is that when we gather, there's something the Lord installs, there's something the Lord imparts, there's something the Lord deals with. Uh, and there is, uh, even though, I, I think, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling just a tad lethargic uh, as a result of so many meals in the space of 36 hours. Um, and, and, and you realise, well, OK, well, that's the human side of things, but what's happening on, what is happening on the inside? What is happening spiritually in this, in this context uh, that you and I can uh, latch onto, so to speak, allow to become a part of us, and know that it would prepare us uh, for the journey that is ahead. And, and uh, probably on a personal basis too, I'd say I, I don't think I've missed too much this Christmas, or, although I did wake up this morning and realise it's Boxing Day, and perhaps I could go to the sales, you know, because, I mean, some of those are amazing. You wouldn't believe what something... You know, the, but, um, you know, there's better things to be doing, isn't there? Yeah, like giving attention to our relationship with the Lord. And I think that's the drift of what I want to share with you this morning uh, in regards to this passage. Now, I do have to make a personal declaration. Uh, and I know for folk who are regularly a part of Victor Harbour gathered, uh, um, it's you're picking up on my hobby horses, I'm sure, by now. You must have picked up on this one. This is a passage I would regularly refer to. Again, because of its content and its context and, and, and what, it's, what it's actually saying. Uh, and, and I'm not spending a, a long time this morning uh, in regards to the message time because there, there is value uh, in time spent together, particularly in this season. And as Elaine's just done, may be reminded of something that I, I perhaps could have shared the other night. And I think, well, I don't want to let the opportunity slip by altogether. I'll spend some time with my Christian brothers and sisters and share it in that context because of the value thereof. I'm not moving forward, Des. Do you know there might be a re Oh, hang on. Don't worry, Des. It's, uh, you know, didn't, doesn't take me long to catch on, does it? You actually got to switch this little thing on. You know? I did mention about being a little lethargic. So if some of my words are slurred, please don't mention the Margie. But it's, 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 this, um, it's, it's this particular passage in Philippians 3 that I, probably in the, in the years of ministry that I've been involved, over half of the occasions where I've been sharing at this time, which is virtually our final celebration in 2021, I will use this portion of God's Word. And, and for a variety of reasons, uh, and I'll share a couple of the details out of it in a moment. But I, I want to recommend it to you uh, at this time as well. And the particular reasons why I, I would recommend it to you is because it's so accessible. I mean, Don just read it and you saw it on the screen. Uh, Elaine's used her mobile phone this morning to, to uh, you know, present a, a psalm and those sorts of things. All of this, all of this sort of God revelation, God speaking into our lives is so accessible. And you can turn to this portion if you know how to spell Philippians. And if you don't, you just Google it because it'll give the correct spelling. And you can go to this particular passage and it's quite accessible. The second reason that I approach it personally is because it's the great framework. This particular letter has an amazing framework to it. I'm not going into it this morning, but just the context of the letter says overall, says some awesome stuff about a personal relationship with Jesus that obviously this bloke who's inspired to write it is all on about. He's just switched on to this relationship with Jesus. And that's the third reason why I love this particular portion of God's word, because this part is very personal. It's virtually a capture, it's, it's a mini testimony of the person who's inspired to write the overall letter. And then finally, the other upside of it is, I'm actually invited into the same space that this Paul is travelling in. 
and I'll come to that at the end of sharing with you this morning, that as much as there is this personal testimony that shared, Paul says, I want you, I want you to catch, capture something in my heart and I want you to imitate me as I set out to imitate Jesus. And I, I don't want us to be in this, in this journey, not just a, a, an abstract faith journey, but something's real and it's life transforming every day uh, that we walk with the Lord. So here's, here's my uh, uh, three point and then a final little wrap up one this morning. The Apostle Paul says, and, and it's quite a profound statement, he says, what, whatever I have gained, I count it as loss for the sake of of Christ. Now that's that's the abbreviated version of, of a couple of comments that he makes that are really, really just powerful personal statements. Because we know for a fact this fellow, this fellow by the name of Paul, he he was travelling in life full speed with a whole lot of things that were happening. You could honestly say, man, it was happening for Saul before he became Paul. He was making gains. He had momentum. He had direction. He had purpose. He had, he had status. He had affirmation. He had achievement. And you could say that he could honestly say, this bloke, it was, it was coming together for him until he met Jesus. And he suddenly realised, all of that stuff's taken me nowhere. I've actually been in the face of God for a good percentage of my life and I realise it's taking me nowhere. All of the ritual, all of the law, all of the human achievement, all of the detail that says, I've got to do it in order to be right with God. He says, it's not going to cut. It's, not, it's just not going to cut it. And so he realises, as a result of this personal encounter with Jesus, that why, the, the track he was travelling was in actual fact taking him away from God. All the time he thought it was going to take him towards God. And all the time he's saying, hey God, I can do it. You just give me the script and I'll run it out and I'll impress you so much because I've got ego as big as a mountain. And he met Jesus, which was totally humbling. And he realised, this is what it is. It's the relationship with God that's personal that delights the heart of the Father. It's this personal relationship with Jesus that will cut it. It's a dramatic change of direction and it's often brought forward as a testimony and it's, and it's totally legitimate. And it reminds me, it reminds me at some point in my life, there has to be this, this switch of direction that says, I am not the master of my own destiny. I am not the one that can impress God so much by whatever I do. There is this genuine humility that says, there's only one person who can put me right with God. And it doesn't happen to be this one in this wrapping. I need to trust one person who can put me right with God. Second part of what he says, and these are just taken little, little clips out of this, this amazing testimony of the Apostle Paul. And he says, I've not already obtained this, you know, I've, I've, I've not arrived. I am quite looking forward to uh, my shared journey with my wife this afternoon. We head off to Victoria to visit our family. <laughs> and the good thing is, we won't have children on board saying, as we get the other side of Port Elliot, are we there yet? That's really, you know, we had a little face-to-face -face chat with our, a couple of our grandsons yesterday, and that's a delight when you can't be there in person. But you know, I can, I can remember when our children were that young, I think, yeah, this all comes back to me. It's a file at the back there, you know, it's still there. And you know, sort of think, that's one I really do enjoy is not at me anymore. I can, I can drive along not hearing, are we there yet, Dad? Are we there yet? But I, I do know there's a sense in which it is still there. And, and, and it's this reminder that says, hey, look, I'm not there yet. This, this, this whole thing of relationship with God, of this faith journey with Jesus, even this fellow, this fellow, the Apostle Paul, is saying, I'm not there yet. 
And I would have to say, reading the testimony of the Apostle Paul, he had a lot of momentum. That momentum that was taking him away from God was now taking him at the same pace into deeper and deeper into a relationship with God. And he's covering territory at a rate that you'd wonder how he could possibly do it. And the genuine way in which the Lord can transfer, as it were, transform, redirect enthusiasm, zeals, appetites, desires, plans, and just reorientate them into his purposes rather than my purposes. And the good thing is eventually in following Jesus, you discover there's a match. My purpose is his purpose. His will is my will. Just like it's becoming like Jesus, I think the scripture says. But Paul says quite honestly, I have not yet arrived. And so I'm determined to keep going at the pace that the, that the Lord determines. And then the third bit that I just want to focus on briefly this morning. The one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward, there is this sense of, it's an interesting term that he uses. You know, I'm forgetting what lies behind? Now, I've heard more than one of you make mention of the fact that we tend to, as we get older, forget things. Is that so? <laughs> Obviously, there's some measure of connectedness there. But you, all, you and I also know that what's in the mind is actually the store of a lot of life that we do. But we, we share conversation with people on Christmas Day, whoever it might be. We have guests or visitors or family or whatever. And what are you, what are you doing? You're drawing on what's in the store, aren't you? you talk, and I love it when we're in the middle of a conversation. You know, I'm sitting there because you notice how often I'm not always talking, perhaps. But I'm, I'm sitting there listening to a conversation and I'm thinking straight away of something. Oh, I'll just wait. If only they'd stop talking, I'm going to tell them about something that's just come to my mind. It's just wait until they hear this because this is so vivid in my mind now. I just want to tell them. Because the store of the mind carries so much of the memory of the journey to this point of time. But Paul knows the testimony he's sharing with us here. And you and I know there are some things we need to put in context. He uses the word forget. Has anybody ever tried to forget something? I, I remember I was a little kid. And as little children do, we like to venture. We were living in a house in Oval Road. And just down the road was the kindergarten. Now, it had this fence, which means absolutely nothing to me at that age. The fences are for climbing over not for keeping me out. So it climbs over, and of course, kindy equipment's so much fun to play on. And, I, and so I start, there's this big old, uh, looks like a, uh, a spear, or what, what do you call it? You put the cotton reel, your reel on, you know, a big reel. It's come from the uh, telecom, where they have the big cable wrapped around it. And the good thing is, you could stand up on it, and the whole idea is you walk along, and you, ever tried that? Here, try it now at your age and see how you go. Yeah. Oh, my, sorry, that was a bit insulting, wasn't it? I'll try it at my age. <laughs> and, you know, away you go. Anyway, I'm going away, and all of a sudden I feel, oh, that hurt my finger. There was a nail in it. It ripped all the way up my little finger, it did. And took it home. Mum just wrapped it up in a bit. You see the scar up, and i still there. Wasn't that a vivid memory? How am I going to forget it? Well, that's an interesting one, isn't it? What's Paul saying? Well, in many ways, he's saying there are memories sometimes. Now, that's the first time I've told that little illustration. Have you heard it before? Well, it's at least three years then since I've used it. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the memories there, some of them are not of that nature because I know my hand healed. That was a situation now I can look back on and enjoy something of my childhood even though there was an element of hurt there. So it's how do I work with that hurt? Can I bring back the memory without the pain? It's a tricky bit. If you want to talk about it, George, you'll take any conversations, won't you, George? 
No, no. Perhaps that wasn't a good idea to refer to George. But it is something that we are working through. Some things that Paul says, they keep looming up on the screen and they take a lot of your attention, a lot of your energy, a lot of your focus, and it stops you from moving forward. Do you understand what I'm saying there? Without getting into lots, I'm not into psychology, but I know for me, this, this is how it does work. That I look at some things, and this is, this is my, I know, I believe that the Apostle Paul is talking about that whole aspect of his dramatic conversion. That what was prior to that is no longer holding him. He's, he's letting it go. He's forgetting it. He knows that he was in the face of God. He knows that he was, he was doing damage to the plans and purposes of God. And he's been convicted and convinced and, and there's been a dramatic change. There's been a releasing. He's experienced forgiveness. And that's all there. But the memory could easily dominate his, his capacity to move forward. But he says, I'm leaving that behind. I'm putting it in context. And there are things that I know that in, a, in our personal journey that uh, we can look back on and some things I know personally I have not resolved totally. And I know the Lord will remind me not to hold me up from going forward, but to say, Peter, you need to resolve that to further experience the freedom and the liberating that I've made provision for you to walk in. Does that make sense? Any nods this morning? Because it's really, really important. Like we look at 2022 and can we release? How much of 2021 can we release ourselves from? Or do we carry 2020 and 2021 with its weight and heaviness or whatever influence it's had upon us, do we move forward into 22 with all the weight still there? And the Lord's saying, I've made provision for you to leave a lot of that behind, to put it back behind you, not, not just, well, you can't forget about it because you know there's something that you've learned in that space, but it's something that it doesn't hold you. Anyway, hopefully you've got a bit of a drift of what I'm trying to say there because it, it comes back to that beautiful um, comment Jesus made. He says, for freedom, I have set you free. It's part of that working out of that aspect of our relationship with him. And of course, I don't want to oversimplify that because there is sometimes in our personal journey things that take more. It, it, we do have to pause and invest ourselves maybe in, in reconciling as far as we possibly can or putting things in context uh, that in order that we can sort of know the releasing from the hold of that memory. And so finally... There is this, oh yeah, no, no, I'll go to the finally bit. There is this uh, verse uh, in, that says, let those of us who, and, and Paul goes on to say some other things about this being in the venture together, let us hold true to what we have attained. It's a wonderful thing to have shared thinking. A shared sense of, and I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating this morning, and, and I'll put it in your mind, that, that, that we can all start moving from this point if we're prepared to, as it were, as the Apostle Paul did, said, I'm leaving back behind all of that human endeavour. I don't want to go along that track. I want to walk in every provision the Lord's made for, for me. And I want to keep walking because I know I'm not there yet. You know, they're, they're, clearly there are some uh, Jesus followers who have got a lot of knowledge and they've got it together and they're able to say, look, I'm really, I really appreciate it. It's, it's coming together. But no one Jesus follower I've met yet can say, look, I've arrived. Just walk with me because I'm the fountain of information. But in the humility that again reflects the nature of Jesus, I'm able to say I'm not there yet. And I'm making, uh, uh, participating in this wonderful provision the Lord's made so that I can be putting those memories in their right context. Some of them I'm totally released from. And others I will work with because I know I need to, they need to be resolved. So we have a shared mindset in some ways. Now I know that reality says that in the group that's here this morning, all of us are a different place in our thinking at the moment. Did you realise that? I have to look at you and say, you're not thinking like I'm thinking. 
which you'd say, well, that's probably a good idea because I can't always understand what you're saying. But our thinking is, I know that I'm on track with Jesus. I know he is Lord. I'm discovering how that works. And like the Apostle Paul, I'm thinking, what does resurrection power look like in my life? Did you notice that one? I want you to know the power of his resurrection and the implications thereof. Wow, let me see a bit more of that. And we say, yes, 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 yes. Now I've got to open my eyes and say, because the Spirit of God's got exactly the same script. He says, I'm going to show you the risen Lord Jesus. And I'm going to give demonstration, demonstration of the fact that he is the risen Lord by what I do in your life. <laughs> Suddenly it becomes personal. But if we all agree, I want to track like Paul did. I want to track along there saying, yeah, I haven't arrived. I'm really pleased that I can see clearly the path and the person I need to focus on. And it's absolute delight to be able to do it with a bunch of people traveling in the same direction, even if at this moment we haven't got exactly the same sort of thoughts moving through our heads. But it's appropriate to quote the prophet of old, you know, he will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed on him. Let's pluck that out of nowhere, but it sits in this space. Because peace, and again, it has this wonderful sense of stillness. But in actual fact, it speaks much more of completeness. I am in my walk with Jesus at a point of completeness, but I've not arrived. But I'm pleased to be where I am. And the good thing is, Jesus is going to take me forward and he's going to take you forward from where I am and where you are, even if we're not in the same place. Isn't that awesome? I love that too. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for who we are. Are people discovering exploring and experiencing what it is to not just celebrate Jesus is Lord, but Lord to live who you are in our lives. With that sense of realisation humbly, the Lord, I've got so much to learn. There's places you want to take me that I've never been before yet. Now, things you want to do in my life and our lives, we can only have a sense of anticipation. When it dawns upon us, we can be pleasantly and powerfully surprised. But Lord, we thank you. Thank you for what is in the next day. The next day that you give for us that will engage us in taking another step of faith, another step of experiencing and living out the wonder of your risen presence in our lives by your Spirit. And Father, we pray again that in each of our lives, in the life of this fellowship, you will be glorified through Jesus Christ, the child of Bethlehem, the Jesus, Saviour of the cross, the risen Lord Jesus, the exalted Lord Jesus. We bless you, Lord. Amen.